Are you getting ready to take the Praxis Core writing exam? That is test code 5723. If that is a test that you need to pass, then good news. My name is Matt Taylor, and I am a test prep expert with study.com. And I'm going to give you my top 10 tips for passing the exam. All right, let's jump in. The Praxis Core writing exam only gives you 40 minutes to answer 40 multiple choice questions. You also have to write two short essays in just 30 minutes. That's pretty tight. My first two tips are all about how to finish the exam on time. Number one, aim for about 50 seconds per multiple choice question. You actually have exactly one minute per multiple choice question, but some questions will stump you. Aiming to spend less time will give you a cushion for those harder, more time consuming questions. Consider practicing with a stopwatch so that you can know how long you're spending per question and so you can get used to what 50 seconds feels like. Remember, you can't bring your watch into the exam, so you need to do enough practice that you know what the right pace feels like. Number two, skip and come back. If a question is stumping you, don't waste time staring at it. Skip it and come back at the end. You want to make sure you have enough time to answer all of the questions that you know how to do. Who knows? The easiest question of the day might be the last one on the exam. Of course, don't forget to come back to the questions you skipped. And if they still stump you, then always put in a guess. The next five tips are key strategies for answering questions. Use these strategies to save time and to get through problems that are more difficult. Number three, read the full sentence. You're going to see a lot of short passages on Praxis Core writing. Sometimes a passage is a single sentence where you have to spot an error. It's really important that you read the full sentence. Sometimes the correct answer might be part of the sentence that doesn't look important. Here's an example. We went to the movies and get a giant popcorn, which of course spilled all over Aaron and me as soon as the movie started. In this example, I have to find the error or select no error. My choices are the underlying portions of the sentence. If I just look at the underlying portions and the surrounding words, I might not notice that choice A, get, is in a different tense than the other verbs in the sentence. But if I read the whole sentence, I see that it's clearly wrong. So read the whole sentence. Number four, read the whole passage. You'll also see passages that are longer than a sentence. The longest passages are usually a few paragraphs long. When you encounter questions with longer passages, you'll often see questions that require you to read and understand the full passage, or at least individual paragraphs. A clue word in the question is in context. When you see a question start with in context, you know you need to understand how a sentence or a paragraph fits into the whole. Number five, always guess. Don't leave any questions blank. A blank question is an automatic zero for that question, and there is no chance of ever getting a point for it. Since there's no penalty for guessing, you should always put in a guess, even if you have no idea what the answer is. Since there are five answer choices, you'll get a free point about 20% of the time. When you're guessing, first eliminate any answer choices that you know are wrong, and then choose a random answer. I recommend deciding ahead of time what your guessing letter is. For example, always select choice A when guessing. This way, you don't waste time trying to decide what to guess. Number six, choose the most correct answer. There will be some questions where you might think multiple answer choices could be correct. The question might be worded as, which source would be most useful? In this case, multiple answers might be correct and you have to think about which answer is most correct. Take a second to read this example. The student might get valuable insights from all of these sources and choose to use all the sources, but the most reliable source is the peer reviewed article. Number seven, read the question carefully and answer the question that is asked. Always read the question carefully and make sure to know what is being asked. This is especially important with word problems. Take a minute to read this question. If I still had my head in the question we just looked at, I might immediately select choice A, peer reviewed journal. But if I take a closer look at the question, I see that this question is asking for a primary source rather than a reliable source. Now that I've read the question carefully, I see that the correct answer is choice B. This tip also applies to the essays. Make sure you read the prompt carefully, understand what is being asked, and write an essay that directly addresses the prompt. If you write a great essay on a different topic, you'll get a low score. My last three tips are how to get the most from your preparation. Follow these tips while preparing to feel confident on test day. Number eight, don't spend time memorizing rules 
but do practice using them. A lot of the questions on this test are about recognizing grammar, mechanics, and other rules of writing. Memorizing lots of rules might be a little bit helpful, but you're not going to see questions that ask you to define simple predicates or when to use a comma before a conjunction. Instead, you will have to apply your knowledge and recognize when something is right or wrong. Which takes me to tip number nine, practice, practice, practice. There is no substitute for working through sample questions that mirror those that you will face on test day. Every practice question that you do is gonna help you be a little bit more prepared for test day. And when you see that question on the test, you will think, oh yeah, I just did something like this. And that is gonna help you a ton. Study.com has unlimited practice categorized by test topic. So you can focus on the areas that you need most help with. As you practice, read the explanations that accompany the question. This will help you understand why you're right or wrong and how you can do it again on a similar question. Reading the explanations carefully is much more effective than memorizing a bunch of rules. And number 10, take full length practice tests. Make sure to take at least one and preferably two or three full length practice tests. I know it can be difficult to find an uninterrupted hour and a half, but it's essential that you get a feel for the full test experience, start to finish, and build stamina for the full length test. You don't want to get halfway through the actual test and realize you're losing focus. You can prep in a number of different ways. I'm going to recommend study.com's Praxis Core Writing Test Prep Course. It covers everything I just went through, but in a ton more detail, including short form videos that explain all concepts that you're going to encounter on the test, along with a huge bank of high quality practice questions complete with answer explanations so you can learn from your mistakes. All the content has been written and vetted by former teachers and users who completed the course and have 92% pass rate. So yeah, it's a good resource for you. Also, please check out more videos in this series. We have Praxis Core writing question walkthroughs here shortly so that we can tackle some specific questions together and as well as information for a bunch more Praxis tests. So if you found this video helpful, please like and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to get alerted when new teacher test prep content drops. And also, I want to hear from you. Let me know down below in the comments if there are specific tests or questions that you're struggling with that we could cover here. And don't forget to circle back once you've passed your Praxis 5723 test so we can all celebrate with you. Take care.